Hello, 21st century learners. Climb aboard and explore with Teacher Delore. Together, let's discover different worlds and dimensions as we enter this literary adventure. I am Ma'am Delore. Join me as we explore the world of literature. Today, I will not just be your teacher. I will also be your tour guide. Together, we will travel from lesson to lesson, discover treasures, and experience an extraordinary adventure as we journey through 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world. Did you know that our forefathers already have their literature, which reflected in their customs and traditions? They had their alphabet even before they were colonized. The Spanish friars burned their alphabets in the belief that they were works of the devil or were written on materials that quickly perished, like the barks of trees, dried leaves, and bamboo cylinders, which could not have remained firm even if efforts were made to preserve them. Our unique geographic location is the reason why we are rich. In this lesson, we'll dig deeper in the richness of our culture and literature. Today, we will learn about geographic, linguistic, and ethnic dimensions of Philippine literary history from pre-colonial to the contemporary. Ready to take off? Grab your modules. Here we go. As we tour around the different lessons, a series of tour tasks will be given to you. Hmm, quick question. What do you know about the different literary periods in Philippine literature? Here's your first tour task. Try to complete the literary timeline. Choose your answers from the given choices. I'll give you time to think. A. Japanese period B. Rebirth of Freedom C. post -Edza. D. American period E. Pre-Colonial period F. 21st century G. Spanish H. Period of Enlightenment I. Period of Activism and New Society J. Period of Literature in English Time's up. Let's see how you did. 1565 was a pre-colonial period. 1566 to 1871 marked the Spanish era. 1872 to 1898 was a period of enlightenment. The Americans influenced our literature in 1898 all the way to 1941. Then from 1946 to 1970, we had a significant period for Filipino literature in English. 1970 to 1980 was a period of activism and the new society. The new freedom era was from 1981 to 1985. Post-EDSA was from 1986 to 1999. And 2001 up to the present marks the 21st century. Got everything correctly? Task unlocked. Let's hop on to the next adventure. This is not your ordinary literature class. This is 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world. 21st century learners, be honest. When was the last time you scanned pages of an old book or even a new one? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Most of you are ICT inclined. As they say, the way to appreciate literature is to look back. Let's do a major throwback. Our first destination, the pre-colonial literature. Long before the Spaniards and other foreigners landed or set foot on Philippine shores, our forefathers already had their own literature stamped in the history of our race. The pre-colonial literature is characterized by folk tales. The epic age and folk songs. 
Buckle up. Let's get to know them one by one. Fox tales. Fox tales are stories that grew out of the lives and imaginations of the people, or folk. They have always been the children's favorite type of folk literature. Hmm, definitely my favorite. These are made up stories about life, adventure, love, horror, and humor. Where one can derive lessons from. Have you heard the tale about the sun and the moon? Hmm, can't get over it. This Filipino folktale not only gives an origin story to the stars, but also circles themes of family and responsibility, important elements of tribal culture, and equally important in modern life. Epic Age. Epics are long narrative poems in which a series of heroic achievements or events, usually of a hero, are dealt with at length. The Epic Age produced a wealth of literature. Scholars estimate that we have no fewer than 24 epics from different regions in the archipelago. One famous example of an epic is Biagni Lamang, which our Ilocano brothers and sisters take pride in, as the ones in the Visayas regions boast of Maragdas. Another popular Moro epic is the Parang Sabir. And of course, the Ibalon from the Bicol region. And since time immemorial, we already had our own versions of demigods, like the ones we see in Hollywood movies nowadays. An example of this is Hinilawud, a Panay epic that recounts the story of the exploits of three Suludnon demigod brothers, Labaudungon, Humadapnon, and Dumalapta. Various cultural groups and organizations have featured this epic on stage. It would take about three days to fully stage the epic, which makes it one of the longest epics in the world. Definitely, these folk songs are our authentic Filipino flair. These are one of the oldest forms of Philippine literature that emerged in the pre-colonial period. These songs mirrored the early forms of culture. Many of these have 12 syllables, examples of which are kundiman, kumintang o tagumpay, ang dalit o inno, ang uyayi o hele, diana, suliraning and talindaw. Our Filipino culture, tradition, and literature was already rich even before the Spaniards came. We grew hearing different folk tales, manifested artistic feelings through folk songs, and gave tribute to heroic achievements. Then the Spaniards came and influenced our literature. Religious and secular prose and poetry are introduced during the Spanish colonization period. The first Filipino alphabet called Alibata was replaced by the Roman alphabet. The Christian doctrine became the basis of religious practices. European legends and traditions brought here became assimilated in our songs. Recreational plays were also performed by Filipinos during the Spanish times, just like the Sinaculo, Panunuluyan, Salubong, and Zarzuela. Second destination, the period of enlightenment. 1872 to 1898. In this period, Filipino intellectuals wrote about the hitch of colonization. The propaganda movement was spearheaded mostly by the intellectual middle class. Known as Ilustrados, Jose Rizal, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, Cristiano Lopez Jaina, Antonio Luna, Mariano Ponce, Jose Maria Panganiban, and Pedro Paterno used the power of the pen to ignite the Filipinos' patriotic spirit to fight for the cause of freedom. Our national hero, Dr. Serizal, contributed to our literary identity through his works. Noli Me Tangere, Mi Ultimo Adios, Sobre la Idolencia de los Filipinos and Filipinas Dentro de Cien Anos. 
otherwise known as Plaridel, Marcelo H. Del Pilar had his own share of literary contributions, such as Kaingat Kayo, Be Careful, and the Salan at Tuxuhan, Prayers and Jokes. La Solidaridad propagandist Graciano Lopez Haina also showed his writing prowess through the following works, Fray Butud, La Iha del Fraile, and Everything is Hamburg, together with some other titles. Third Destination, The American Regime, 1898 to 1944. The American influence in our educational system also enhanced our literary inclination as a nation. Americans influenced Filipino writers to write using the English language. Jose Garcia Villa became famous for his free verse. The language used in writing during this period were Spanish and Tagalog, and the dialects of the different regions. But the writers in Tagalog continued in their lamentations to the conditions of the country and their attempts to arouse love for one's native tongue. All right, so we were able to express using the language we are comfortable with. And that's basically how it's supposed to be. Fourth Destination, Japanese period, 1941 to 1945. The development of Philippine literature was interrupted when the Japanese colonized the Philippines from 1941 to 1945. Of course, Philippine literature in English and the circulation of most newspapers came to a halt, except for the Tribune and Philippine Review. The common themes of most poems during the Japanese occupation were faith, religion, arts, nationalism, love of life and country, and life in the barrios. Three of the most common poem forms during this period were the haiku, the naga, and karaniwanganyo. Of course, who does not know of the 575 pattern of a poem? A haiku is composed of three lines following the respective 575 syllabic distribution. The other types of poems that flourished during this era were the Tanaga and the Karaniwang Anyo. So, what happened with our Philippine literature when the Japanese came? Fifth Destination, the Philippine Literature in English, 1941 to 1945. Japanese imposed strict prohibitions in writing and publishing of works in English. Philippine literature in English experienced a dark period. In the new Filipino literary period, literature in Tagalog was revived with themes that dealt with Japanese brutality, the poverty of life under the Japanese government, and brave guerrilla exploits. From 1970 to 1972, literature was under the influence of the period of activism. Period of activism. 1970 to 1972. The famous Ponciano Pineda said that the youth activism during this era was due to domestic and worldwide causes. Because of the ills of the society, the youth moved to seek reforms. Of course, our literature was also influenced by this scenario, and that paved way for the period of new society. Period of new society. 1972 to 1980. The youth became vocal with their sentiments as they demanded change in the government. Bloody demonstrations and expressions both in the sidewalks and literature happened. Have you ever heard of some literary experts who have earned for themselves some palanca distinctions? Yes, they are a pool of writers whose excellence is commendable. The Palanca Awards or Don Carlos Palanca Memorial Awards for Literature is a set of literary awards for Filipino writers. It is a country's highest literary honor in terms of prestige. Winning works are entered in the competition either as previously published pieces or in manuscript form. The Palanca Awards organized with the Carlos Palanca Foundation is one of the Philippines' longest-running awards programs. And during the period of the new society, 
which started on September 21, 1972, the Carlos Palanca Awards for Literature continued to give annual awards. Martial Law, January 2, 1981 After 10 years of military rule and some changes in the life of the Filipinos, which started under the new society, martial law was at last lifted on January 2, 1981. The Philippines became a new nation, and this was named the New Republic of the Philippines by former President Ferdinand Marcos. Palms during this period were romantic and revolutionary. Filipino songs dealt with themes that were true to life, like those of grief, poverty, aspirations for freedom, love of God of country, and of fellow men. Post Edsa One Revolution, 1986 to 1995. 1986 to 1995 marked another era in our literary timeline. History took another twist. Once more, the Filipino people regained their independence, which they lost for 20 years. People power or lakas ng bayan reverberated across the country and around the world, signaling the post edsa One revolution period. New Filipino songs, newspapers, speeches, and TV programs underwent massive changes. The newspapers that enjoyed an overnight increase in circulation were the Inquirer, the Malaya, and the People's Journal. Oops, is it shaking? Welcome to 21st century period. New trends keep on emerging and innovations continue to be introduced to meet the needs and taste of the new generation. 21st century learners are required to be ICT savvy to keep up with newer styles and formats of writing. New codes and languages are used to add flavor to the literary pieces produced nowadays. Whew! What a literary adventure! A journey from pre-colonial up to the 21st century. Let us go back to writing a haiku. Again, it is a three-line poem with a 575 syllabic distribution. Here is an example. Life is a blessing, a wonderful gift from him. Nothing is missing. Now, based on what we have discussed in the different eras of our literary timeline, we have proven that as a country and as a nation, we are resilient. We have not only survived, but we have continued to be prolific, creative, and expressive. Our appreciation of these literary gifts and expertise is part of our identity as Filipinos. It is an identity of makajos, makatao, makakalikasan, at makabansa. 21st century learners, I hope the literature tour was a fun-filled experience for you. Today, we identify the geographic, linguistic, and ethnic dimensions of Philippine literary history from pre-colonial to the contemporary period. We also did a sample analysis and interpretation of a text as we went through the pages of our literary history. There is more to come from the 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world. Stay tuned for more! On the next episode, we'll journey through the representative texts from the region. See you next time for our hashtag Explore with Teacher Dolor, only here on DepEd TV.